If your soil feels stubborn, lifeless or clumpy, no matter how much fertilizer you throw at it, here's a secret that will change your garden forever. It's not about fertilizer at all. The real magic makers are earthworms. When they show up, the soil transforms. When they disappear, your garden's life shuts down. I discovered this the hard way, until I tested a mulch mix so effective it doubled my earthworm population in just a few weeks. Today on Timeless Crops Haven, I'm breaking down exactly what that mix is, how to make it, and the right way to use it so your soil comes alive from the inside out. Why earthworms are the real builders of healthy soil? You can tell the truth about your soil just by asking one question. Are there worms in it? Earthworms are nature's ultimate soil engineers. Every burrow they dig lets in air and water. Every cast they leave behind feeds your plants with slow-release nutrients. They improve structure, boost microbes, and even help control disease. But here's the trick. Worms don't just show up because you want them to. They go where they're fed. The kind of mulch you use on the surface either calls them in like a dinner bell or sends them packing underground. I spent months experimenting with different mulch materials, leaves, straw, grass clippings, alfalfa and wood chips, and the difference was dramatic. Some mulches were crawling with worms, others turned into dry, lifeless mats. That's when I realised mulch isn't just a cover, it's a worm invitation or a rejection notice. The garden trials that exposed the winners and losers. Here's what happened when I put them head to head. Each mulch got the same size bed, the same amount of water, and the same sunlight. After two weeks, I lifted the mulch layers and counted the worms in the top three inches of soil. Under shredded leaves, the soil was alive. Worms everywhere. The soft, damp texture and gentle sugars from the decomposing leaves made it irresistible. When I added a little alfalfa as a nitrogen boost, the numbers skyrocketed. More worms per square foot than any other plot. Grass clippings came close, but only when applied thinly. When I layered them thick, the worms vanished. The clippings overheated, turned slimy, and choked off oxygen. Straw did okay. Not bad, not great. It held moisture, but didn't offer much food. And wood chips? Forget it. Fresh ones drove the worms away. They sucked nitrogen out of the soil while breaking down, making the surface a barren zone for weeks. Only when the chips aged and softened did life begin to return. The verdict was clear. Worms crave a cool, moist, microbe-rich environment. They want food that breaks down gently, not too fast, not too dry, and definitely not fermenting. After uh, repeating these trials across multiple beds, I landed on a formula that honestly changed everything, the worm magnet mulch mix. It's simple, natural, and, well, incredibly effective. By volume, here's what you need. 70% shredded leaves, 20% alfalfa meal or pellets, and 10% finished compost. This exact combination, it creates a balanced ecosystem, right on the surface. The shredded leaves form the structure. They're light, airy, and really hold on to moisture. The alfalfa provides the protein-rich nitrogen worms just love. It also triggers microbial fermentation that, quite literally, calls worms upward. And then the compost adds living biology, buffering the mix and preventing it from turning sour. All right, here's how to apply it properly. 
For every 10 square feet of garden area, you'll want to mix 1.7 cubic feet of shredded leaves, half a cubic foot of alfalfa, and a quarter cubic foot of compost. Spread that evenly across your soil in a nice two-inch thick layer. Then water it gently with about one and a half gallons of water per ten square feet, just enough to moisten the mulch, not drench it. If your soil's dry, pre-water it the day before and let it soak overnight before you apply your mix. Now, for a bigger 10 by 10 foot garden bed, which is 100 square feet, you just multiply that ratio by 10. So you'll need around 11.7 .7 cubic feet of shredded leaves, 3.3 .3 cubic feet of alfalfa, and 1.7 cubic feet of compost, followed by about 15 gallons of water. Within a few days, the mulch will start to decompose gently. You'll notice white fungal threads weaving through the surface. That's your microbial network forming, and that's a good sign. Within a week, the worms start tunneling up. By the end of the month, that mulch layer will be absolutely teeming with life. Let's talk about how each mulch type performed in the trials. Shredded leaves, well, they top the list. They're nature's perfect mulch. They breathe, they hold moisture, and they break down at just the right speed. When you blend them with a nitrogen source like alfalfa, you're really creating the same environment worms evolved in under forest litter. Now, straw held moisture well, but it just didn't have much food. It's a decent neutral option, but if you pair it with a thin compost layer underneath, it turns into a worm-friendly base. Grass clippings are powerful, but honestly, they can be dangerous. A thin layer keeps worms happy, but a thick one suffocates them. The trick is to layer lightly, about half an inch at a time or mix grass with leaves to prevent overheating. Alfalfa by itself is like worm candy, but it can heat up too fast if you use it thick. So keep it under one inch or blend it into the 70-20-10 mix. Its fermentation scent is like a beacon to worms looking for food. Wood chips, well, they came last. Fresh ones actually stole nitrogen from the soil and pushed worms away. Only after about three months of composting did they become worm safe. If you have to use wood chips, pre-compost them or mix them half and half with compost. So, if you want to turn any bed into a real worm haven, here's what you do. Before you apply your mulch, Remove any weeds or crusty layers on top of the soil. Give it a light watering to settle the dust and open up the surface. Then spread the worm magnet mix in your chosen thickness. Two inches for vegetables, three for perennials. Keep the mulch damp, but never soggy. Over the next few weeks, just maintain that moisture balance. If it starts drying out, give it a light mist. Every three to six months, top it up with a fresh half inch of the mix instead of removing the old layer. Each refresh deepens the organic layer, creating a living sponge that keeps worms active and multiplying. Here's the real takeaway for every gardener. In my own trials, this mix didn't just attract worms. It doubled their numbers. Within one season, my soil structure changed completely. It became soft, crumbly, and rich. Plants grew stronger, roots went deeper, and I stopped relying on heavy fertilizers altogether. The secret isn't fancy. It's natural. Worms don't follow chemicals. They follow comfort, food, and moisture. Once you create that environment, they'll work non-stop beneath the surface, turning your soil into living gold. If you found this guide helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, share it with a fellow gardener, and subscribe to Timeless Crops Haven for more tried and true methods that work with nature.
not against it. Let's build better soil, one worm at a time.